So with the real estate market all over the news, of course you're wondering what is the value of my home now. I just recently looked up the value of my own home and let me tell you, it was a very nice thing to see. So today I want to go over two things with you. First of all, what can you do yourselves to find out what the approximate value of your home is? And then secondly, what are professionals doing to actually pinpoint the value of a property accurately? At the end of the video, I also want to show you how much people have paid in 2020 actually over asking price, or I should say over or under asking price. And if you're wondering if that is more like $2,000 or $20,000, stay tuned, the answer will surprise you. If you have not looked at the value of your home recently, you might be pleasantly surprised when you find out because home prices in and around Milwaukee have gone up substantially. The median sold price for a single family home in Milwaukee County, for example, has gone up 10.2% in the last 12 months, according to MLS data. Now, we have seen increasing home values now for a while, but 2020 has set a new record on annual increase. And if the first weeks of 2021 are a good indication for what's ahead of us, we will see a continuation of that upward spiral, which is driven by increasing demand coming from a demographic shift that we are seeing and very limited supply because we only have the houses that we have in Milwaukee. So home pricing and appreciation are actually surprisingly difficult and complex topics. This is why so many are struggling with that. It's relatively easy to give an average appreciation for a larger area, but then when you zoom in into smaller segments, you find that it's increasingly difficult to pinpoint the value of a property. Because it will vary by neighborhood, it will be completely different by price point, and it will even vary by property type. So, for example, if you look at a $250,000 single-family home in Menominee Falls, that can behave differently from a $400,000 condominium in the Third Ward and completely different from a $750,000 residence in Mequon. So you really have to understand how these individual submarkets are driven. They might have somewhat different dynamics and you really have to understand those to come to a meaningful result. Generally speaking, when you look, for example, at the Milwaukee area market of last year of 2020, you can see that the strongest appreciation happened in the market below $300,000. This is the market where all the millennials, which are now first time home buyers, are flocking into. So that market is becoming very crowded and very competitive. Now, what we have seen in last year in 2020 for the first time is that these sellers that are selling these under $300,000 houses, they are typically going into the three to $500,000 segment. So what I'm seeing this year is that this segment is now also becoming more competitive. So there is a cascading effect going on. What we have not seen yet is that Competitiveness has not yet reached the luxury segment over $700,000 or $750,000. That is at the moment the least competitive segment. Regardless which price point you're in, determining the exact fair market value of a property is not an easy thing to do. Newer agents are struggling with this and I can tell because every time we host a workshop for new agents at Keller Williams to show them how to correctly pinpoint the value of a property, they're always packed and there's a lot of questions on the subject. It's also difficult for computer algorithms to pinpoint the exact value of a property and there's also some other reasons involved which we're going into in just a second. Now, there's a few things that you can do on your own to approximate the value of your home and that is actually not very difficult and that's the first question we're going to answer here today. So what are some of the things that you can do in order to find out the approximate value of your home? Let me start out by stating a few things how you should not approach the subject. So some people seem to think that the house has to be worth what they paid for plus appreciation plus the upgrades and improvements that they have made or that the house is worth for whatever the neighbor has sold their house for. So while these things all have an impact on the fair market value of your home, this is not really a good way to go about this. So first, let's talk about tax assessments. If you know nothing about the value of your property, then looking at the tax assessment is a fair starting point, I would say. Now, tax assessments have gotten a lot of attention lately because we went through an area-wide reassessment of property values last year, and many of us have received a property tax bill that was significantly higher than in previous years because of that. Now, a lot of people give the government a lot of credit and they're looking at the official government property value assessment as the ultimate value guide. 
and of course that is not correct. The city tax assessor is doing the best job they possibly can to estimate the value of a property for the purpose of fair taxation, but that's really all there is about. The city assessor has not seen your property from the outside, uh, probably not in decades, and they certainly have not seen anything of the inside. They don't know any of the improvements that you have made. They don't know the condition of the inside of the property. So, of course, that has a huge impact on fair market value of a property. Now, when we look at tax assessments on a regular basis, we see a deviation of up to 20% easy, up or down in both directions in comparison to fair market value. So if you don't know anything about the value of your property, then the tax assessment is a good starting point because at least it will give you, or it should give you a ballpark idea and one data point of what your property might be worth. So the next and very easy thing to do for you is to check your property's value on a free online platform, for example, on Zillow.com. Now, there's a lot of other platforms as well. You can go on uh, Redfin.com, on Trulia, on Realtor.com. They all provide a lot of publicly available information and they also provide you with a computer algorithm calculated valuation of your property. Now, the keyword here is free online platforms. And in case you ever have been wondering how these guys are making money, they are selling your information to a realtor who is willing to pay for it. A good saying that I heard a while ago, and I don't know who uh, said it the first time, is in the online world, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Zillow is probably the most popular one of these online platforms and they have something that is called a Zestimate and that is a computer algorithm generated valuation of your property. So if you type in the address of your property, you are going to get everything that Zillow knows about you and it's completely for free. So you can absolutely look it up. They provide values for about 110 million properties. So chances are you'll find your house in the Zillow database. So let's go take a look. There's a few things that I would like to show you. All right, so here we are on Zillow.com and you don't need to sign up here. It's free, you don't need to create an account. All you have to do is put your address in here or the address of any property and it will show you all the information Zillow has on file. It's completely for free. And I've already uh, preloaded one here. It's a little slow today. So this is a property here in Mequon on the north side of Milwaukee. And uh, you can see that it has sold for 270 uh, a couple of years ago, and it's now worth, according to Zillow, about $312,000. And it gives you here some information, a range, and what the latest updates and trends are. So $312,000 is actually not a bad guess for this uh, property. Uh, so that's pretty close to fair market value. And I'll show you why. Uh, you will see that here in a second when you look at the map. So this property is surrounded by other properties that are very similar in size, in age. Um, they, they're all, the neighborhood is very uniform. So this is why the Zillow algorithm can do a relatively good job here in predicting the fair market value of that property. That is a pretty good estimate here. I would say that's not that far off. Now I have another example for you. So this was a really good one. I'm going to show you a really bad one. So here's a property in Menominee Falls where this estimate is $180,000. And that is way off because the fair market value of this property is about $270,000. So we're $90,000 off here. And the reason it's off is because Zillow does not know that this property has been completely remodeled. So it knows it sold for $162,000. So the algorithm takes that under account and it says, well, it's a little low, may have gone up a little bit. So it's calculating it $180,000 and that is $90,000 below fair market value. So here you have two examples. One is, uh, you know, Zillow does a very good job. And on the other one, it just doesn't have the right data to make an accurate determination of what fair market value is. So let's take a look at that. If you go here on Zillow and you click down here <clears throat> on Zestimates, it will actually pull up this and you can see here I've already preloaded it off market properties um, they don't have Milwaukee here in the metro area list so I'm just looking here at Chicago because that's the closest so Zillow says we have a median error in our data of about 8.1 percent on this estimate and they have 2.8 million homes uh, listed in Chicago uh, that they have data for 
and then here you have a breakdown that is very interesting so within five percent of the sales price so that means they have they have calculated the value relatively accurately that is about one third of the properties they are plus minus five percent so on a, a three hundred thousand dollar property that's plus minus fifteen thousand dollars approximately so a thirty thousand dollar spread so that's you know for a rough guess not so bad on uh, on two-thirds of the properties they came within 10 percent and on 81 percent of the properties they came within 20 percent of the true value so you can see here the the full weight and gravity of the impact of of the estimate um, you really have a pretty good chance that you are almost 20 percent off here so it it really depends if they have all the data if they know everything about your property if the neighborhood is uniform or not uniform is your if that subject property is very average um, then it will be here on this end and if if it's not very average then it's on that end you can also look here at states so here I can go down to uh, whatever we have Wisconsin oops <clears throat> here we have Wisconsin I'm gonna go up here a little bit here we have Wisconsin, so about the same error rate, 8.6%, 1.9 million homes here. And you can see the, the, the same roughly one third, two thirds, and uh, about 80% here that we have for Wisconsin. No data for Milwaukee, but you can assume it's about the same. You can also look here on national data. So this estimate is not a bad way to get another data point about the value of your home but you have to be realistic about the accuracy that you can expect. Hmm. So between the tax assessment and your zero loads estimate, you already have two data points that you can use to approximate the value of your home. What can you do if you want to have more accurate information? The next best thing you can do is to hire a licensed appraiser. So there is sometimes a little bit of confusion. What is the difference between an assessment and an appraisal? So as we've discussed earlier, the assessment is the municipality valuing your property for the purpose of taxation. An appraisal is something different. An appraiser, a licensed appraiser, is usually being hired by the bank after you have made an offer on a property because they want the bank wants to make sure that you are not overpaying on a property and they are not over lending on that property. So they're going to hire a licensed appraiser to go out there and uh, establish a fair market value for that property. You can also go and hire a licensed appraiser on your own. It's going to be about $550, $600. And then an appraiser will come out, will take a look at your property, measure on the inside and out, so they know the exact square footage of the property, take some pictures, and then they will go back to the office and pull up MLS and will find comparables. So those are properties that have sold recently in your area and that are very similar in size and feature and age to the home that you have. And then the appraiser will use those comparables and some math and analytics to calculate the fair market value of your home. So an appraisal is really a very good way to establish fair market value of your property. It's a very neutral way. Usually they tend to be a little bit on the conservative side, but if you want to have an objective third party opinion and you don't mind spending a little bit of money, then an appraisal is a good way of getting that done. If you're not ready or don't have the time to wait for a professional appraisal and you do want another data point, there is also another option out there and that is generally not very well known. It is called an RPR report. What is an RPR report? You can think of it as a Zillow for professionals. So real estate agents have to pay for that to have access to RPR. And you can pull an RPR report that has a lot of information about every property. And it also comes with an approximation of the property's fair market value. All right, so here's a sample RPR report and you can tell it's fairly comprehensive, total of 29 pages. Most important information here is right on page number two. We have here an estimated value of 549,000. It gives us a range and also a confidence score. So in this case, only four out of five stars, which is telling me we have to take this one with a grain of salt. There's a lot of good information in here, all the way from neighborhood information to associate demographics, um, historic property information, how it was valued in the past, uh, school district information, so a lot of good stuff here. 
If you are interested in an RPR report for your property, I'm certainly happy to provide you with a free copy. Uh, just let me know the property address and we'll send one over to you. So between all these data points, you have enough information to approximate the fair market value of your home. If you're doing this to satisfy your curiosity or if you're just planning on refinancing your home, this is usually close enough. But what if you're planning on selling your property? When you're selling your property, you really need to set the list price with pinpoint accuracy. Any mistake that you're making in that process, either too high or too low, is probably going to cost you a lot of money. The only way to really pin down a good list price for a property is to complete a full professional CMA. CMA is short for Comparative Market Analysis and it is prepared by a real estate agent. The process of compiling a CMA is actually fairly similar to an appraisal. It all starts out with the real estate agent coming out and taking a look at the lot or the land at the house to see if there is any improvements, for example a finished basement or an additional bathroom, really at anything that is unique and may impact the fair market value. One key difference between an appraisal and a CMA is that the appraisal is really a look in the rearview mirror because it is looking at comparables that have sold in the past, typically in the last six months. The CMA can also include properties that are currently for sale or properties that are currently already under contract but have not closed yet. So the CMA has a little bit more of a forward-looking component to it and it can tell you what a property is likely to sell in the near future versus an appraisal is telling you what a property should have sold for in the past. This is significant, for example, if you're selling a property in the spring because an appraisal will look at properties and how much they have sold for last fall and last winter while a CMA is going to look what other properties are currently for sale in the spring market and who are we are competing against or with. All right, so here is a sample CMA, comparable market analysis, and it all starts out with our subject property, which we have located here, and then the comparables, which are in close proximity, um, all here in MAC1. You can see that we have uh, some active properties in here. You can see that we have some that have already sold. You could already have pending, withdrawn, or expireds in here, but actives and solds usually make the best comparables. What's really critical here is when choosing comparables is that you choose properties that are very similar in size, in age, in features, and in condition to our subject property because otherwise we have to make a lot of manual adjustments in order to calculate our fair market value. So here's our comparable properties, here's our subject, here are the specifications for our subject property. And then what's happening here is we go through that list here and we are making adjustments for all the features that are different. So you can see, for example, four bedrooms versus three bedrooms that warrants an adjustment. Here in this case, the subject property is a lot bigger in square footage than this one. So now we have to adjust for size. Um, some of the subject properties might be bigger. Um, yeah, here's one, for example, that has over 4,000 square feet, so we're adjusting the other way. So we have to make all these adjustments here for garage spaces, extremely popular in, in Mac 1, you need at least a three-car garage. Um, on a new property here, this has a two and a half, so we have to adjust the value here accordingly. So now you work through all these uh, adjustables, and then you get uh, to this page here where you have a summary of all the active listings, you can see here how many days there were on the market. You can see the list price, total adjustment value, and the adjusted price. The same thing for the sold listings. And you get some key numbers down here. And all that allows you to actually calculate the recommended fair market value of that property. You can see there's still a little bit of a range. So we're getting a low and a high here. But you can see this is a lot tighter. And we can apply now our strategy. And depending if we want to price it really aggressively, or if we want to be a little bit more on the high end, depending how much competition we currently have, um, this is how we're going to uh, put the property on the market. So as you've seen, it takes actually quite a bit of work and experience to put together a full CMA. Now this is something that gets easier and better as you do it over and over and over again. It just takes experience and knowing what's going on in the market to get the list price just right.
And why it is so important to get the list press just right, I will show you in a second, because I promised you that I will show you how much people have been paying over or under asking price on properties that have sold here in the Milwaukee area in the last 12 months. All right, here we have some very interesting data and whether you are a buyer or a seller, understanding this market dynamic will definitely give you an unfair competitive advantage in the marketplace. So every single one of these little blue dots here represents an actual sale that has taken place in the last 12 months in Milwaukee in the price bracket between 200 dollars and $300,000. So that's the volume market for Milwaukee. And what this chart is telling you is how many of these properties have sold over asking price up here as opposed to under asking price down here depending on how many days they were on the market. So here you have 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, one month, two months, uh, three months out here. And the first thing you notice here is that how many of these properties have sold very, very quickly. And you can see a lot of them didn't even make it past the first weekend. Many of them have sold with multiple offers. And you can see how many are going 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, even $20,000 over asking price. But then we have some outliers up here. And whenever you see the market correcting this much from an asking price up, because the market corrects really both ways, um, this looks to me like some of these properties were actually underpriced because the market responded so violently to the asking price and went so much over. So I'm guessing that uh, some of these sellers at least left money on the table because these properties were clearly underpriced and they could have gotten ultimately a better result if they would have uh, dialed in their original asking price better. Now, uh, below here, we have properties that have sold below asking price. And you can see uh, days on market is not your friend if you're a seller, because the further you go out, the lower you are in your uh, final result here. So what is happening here is if a property hits the market and all the buyers, the pool of buyers, as we call it, are looking at it and they're deciding it is overpriced, they will just ignore it and let it sit for a while. And then one of two things can happen. Either eventually you get an offer here that is typically below asking price, so the market is correcting down in this case, or you may decide because you're getting so little interaction that you decide to cut your list price down by 10 or $20,000 and then you're finally getting an offer. And when you're getting an offer at this point, people are saying, well, it's been on the market for 60 days, so I see no reason to offer full asking price even at that point. So the price has already been reduced, but you may be getting an offer that is even less than what your reduced asking price is. So this really shows how important it is to really pinpoint your list price you know, perfectly to the current market dynamic and what's going on. As a seller, you want to be here in this space. You want to be right in that zone where buyers are liking your list price. They are thinking this is going to go fast, it's going to go competitive, and they hit it with a really strong offer right away. If you're a buyer, you don't mind being here because properties that have been sitting on the market and that have been aged, are usually receptive to an offer that is a little lower and you can get a good deal if you are uh, working uh, this side of the chart here. So really good information here. If you understand this, you have a good grasp of the market dynamic that we're seeing in Milwaukee. So as you can see, there are really many different ways how to determine fair market value of a property. It all depends for what purpose you need that information and how accurate you need that information to be. If there's any open questions that I haven't answered today or you have other comments, then please leave them in the comment section below. I usually try to answer those within 24 hours and I'm always looking forward to seeing your comments. If this information would be good for a friend or a family member, then feel free to share this video for them and give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much for watching today and I'll see you next week.